So this week, Andrew Tate, who I like to call the L. Ron Hubbard of the incel community, was charged in Romania with rape, human trafficking, and forming an organized crime group to sexually exploit women. Uh, I'm John Cooper from Counterpoint Politics, and I'm joined by my co-host, Desmond Price of the Independent Thought Podcast, and our special guest this week, Connor Hallblive, former congressional candidate from Kentucky. We'll be discussing the Andrew Tate phenomenon and what the left can learn and what we can do to respond here on the left wing. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of this case because I think everyone in our audience knows what's going on here. Something Sometimes when like something talks like a duck and walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, well, it probably rapes the female members of its species like a duck. Uh, from the left, these allegations come as no surprise. We know that when someone is an openly misogynistic asshole like Tate, well, that person is probably an openly misogynistic asshole behind closed doors, too. Add on to that that he essentially created a cult personality and turned it into a massive pyramid scheme. And, well, we know, we pretty much know everything we need to know about this guy before he was even arrested. The only thing any of us were maybe possibly surprised by was the scale of his criminal enterprise. Um, the question that always bugs me is how other people see this, see Andrew Tate, and don't see clear as day what we see. You know, Andrew Tate is such a caricature of an awful person that when someone defends him, it feels like they're trying to argue that the the Detroit Lions are a successful sports franchise. Like, it's just clearly not true. And as absurd as it, this seems, there's like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who became fans of Tate's, especially teenage boys, uh, some of whom I know personally. So it's pretty clear to me that we are collectively doing something wrong as a community in helping teenage boys grow into empathetic and caring men. Not all teenage boys, but definitely some of them. Definitely that be some of them that became fans of Andrew Tate. So my question to you guys is, what should we, what should our audience be doing for the impressionable teenage boys in their own lives to help steer them away from the dangers of Tate's ideology? Because there's just going to be another one of him. Um, and what can we as the general left do to reach out to this demographic that we are currently failing to do? You know, it, it's it's a great question. I'm going to start with the, the second part first. What can the left do to kind of reach out to people? You know, because it, it does seem as though Andrew Tate's audience is more of a right wing kind of a basic of an audience who seem to be gravitating towards his strong presence that he puts off or how he, you know, is trying to like, he constantly talks about trying to like take back masculinity. You know, I think he has like what, like a hustler's university where he tries to teach, you know, like young boys to be men. And, you know, I, I think um, it, it's a strange place that we kind of find ourselves in our society right now. You know, I think, you know, John, you kind of spoke to this a little bit before about just how like there's just some young men who have been kind of led astray by some of the things that are going on online right now. Kind of just kind of throwing this question back to you a little bit. When you you said you know some people in your life who have kind of like gravitated towards Tate, like what is it about him? Because I, I kind of have at a loss of it myself. What is it about him that kind of like has people gravitating towards him in the first place? Because it does seem a little confusing. So there's from my understanding and from, you know, I, I have like some cousins and and some of my girlfriends, like her little brother and, and, and her cousins, like they are at, at that age group, like the middle school boy age group and the way that they talk about Andrew Tate I can tell that most of, like there's one of them who's like the guy that we're like oh he's actually drinking the Kool-Aid and then yeah. most of them are like you know think back to when you were a teenage boy anything that was dark and edgy like got your gears turning right like 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 and that's kind of what it is or they aren't engaging with it on a ideological level they're just like Oh, he said something that we're not supposed to say. And so and so that's funny. Um, and that is like the gateway and something that I've been trying to think about, you know, in, in my own content and in you know how I approach the actual teenage boys in my life is how do we distinguish? Because if you just say that's not funny. Right. And you think back to when you were a teenage boy, it's like, no, that's fucking funny. Like, what are you talking about? If you say that's not funny, you're no longer uh, it's a reliable source of advice for me because clearly that's funny um whether it's funny or not right and so what i think like to me the trick is connecting with these people without just saying you're bad for liking what andrew tate said but also explaining 
why when taken seriously, this ideology is wrong and it hurts people. Um, Because at some point I got that, you know, at some point I thought that like dark edgy humor like that was funny. Maybe not Andrew Tate specifically, he didn't exist, but definitely there were things that I laughed at when I was a 12 year old boy that I would be ashamed of now. I was led, led in the right path, right? And I was led in the right path, I think mainly from a lot of different things that I read, things that I watched in media. Um, but it wasn't necessarily from like political content creators. So like, I, that, that's the that's the jump that I don't really have. Um, but like, I know that like, there are, and there's other like, also just key male figures and female figures in my life that I looked up to that helped push me kind of in the correct direction. But it is a really tough question. Connor, have you had any like direct experience with, you know, Tate fans in your life? Um, n- not really. Uh, maybe one, one or two, but um, I haven't had it directly in my life. But John, I like what you said that, you know, there's been people like Andrew Tate before and there'll be people like him again. Every generation has it. And, you know, like you said, it's, it's entertaining. I mean, most people in your life don't ride around in, in Bugattis and, you know, and all the, the women and, and everything else, but it's a cartoon. And it's mm-hmm. kind of, a, it's kind of, if not a, if not good, it's natural for, you know, young people to kind of be gravitated towards that as, as kind of like, like a fantasy or like, uh, like, you know, professional wrestling. It's fake. It's over the top, but it's, it's entertaining. The thing that Andrew Tate does that, um, and all these people do is they'll take a kernel of truth. You know, the, the idea that the world's fucked up or the idea that things aren't fair, or the idea that, you know, uh, it, it's good to, you know, be assertive. It's good to, uh, you know, it, it, it's good to be proactive. It's, you know, good to be in fitness. All those things are good. So they'll take a kernel of an idea and they'll go off in completely uh, unhealthy trajectory when it comes to it. So I think, you know, it's kind of a two, two-pronged answer. One is you have to just kind of accept that people like this are going to exist. And that, you know, hopefully most of the uh, young people who are gravitated towards this will eventually, you know, get out of it. But the second, you know, you may have to explain to people, look, you know, this one part is true, is true. You know, it's good to be in in uh, in fitness. But, you know, having this take over your life and determine whether you're a, a success or a failure or if you can, you know, do 100 pushups or something, if you can't do 100 pushups, then then you're a weakling beta male. It's like that part's ridiculous. Like, so I think that the point is, is that we on the left need to point out, look, look, what they say is true, but their remedies, their solutions to these are completely idiotic. And, you know, if we start addressing those, those things uh, and, and also just kind of accepting that people like this are going to exist and hopefully they don't take up too much of, uh, of our thing, you know, whatever Greta, Greta Thunberg, you know, she's got a different platform than us, but, how she responded to him was basically like, you're just, uh, I'm not worried about you. You're just a peon and you're just ridiculous. And that, that's kind of how I think we should approach both of these people. So Connor, yeah, to your, your kind of like a point that you were saying about how like taking like a kernel of truth and trying to create a narrative around it. Now I've seen other people do this, you know, the Tucker Carlson's of the world, Donald Trump's of the world, trying to take something that is true about the fact that, you know, society is, you know, struggling right now. There is, economic decline, you know, amongst Americans. And you take that and you kind of like warp reality around it. And I think Tate has kind of done this a little bit with his talks about masculinity uh, in particular. And this is again, kind of like tying into like the, the left wing, right wing kind of perspectives of this conversation, because more people politically on the left have been advocating for things that I feel are very basic, like empowering women, feminism, things of that nature. There are those on the right or in some cases, particularly like Andrew Tate, who want to take that as like, oh, they're trying to, you know, emasculate men or they're trying to depower men or, you know, they don't want men to be men anymore or it's something along those lines, trying to warp reality around this idea and building a cult following. And you have Tate, who was a former martial artist, somebody who's rich and, you know, seemingly, you know, like somewhat good looking and he's like i have all these women around me i have all these great things and you can have these great things too if you do exactly what i tell you and he's created uh basically yeah just a cult around himself and due to that fact he has an unnatural amount of power and he has been apparently you know sexually assaulting people like who are in his service and there are tapes out there of this you know and i 
And I'll try to like have something in the episode description when this comes out so that people can kind of follow along with more of the details of this case if you are in fact interested. And it, it honestly, it, it really grosses me out because I think especially younger people are really susceptible to that type of language, that type of kind of um, misrepresentation of reality. If you if you are this type of way, you can have success. And unfortunately, yeah, John, you're right. There are, I mean, once, if Tate does go to jail, the next scam artist will pop up. So I do think it's important to talk about the kind of the underlying reasons why people like this can become so influential in the first place, because Tate won't be the last person to do this. Yeah, I think there's a couple of different aspects to look at here. One, that kernel of truth thing. I mean, that is a classic, you know, logical fallacy, like people build entire careers off of taking yeah. a kernel of truth and then expanding upon it in ways that aren't true. And Tate's done a masterful job of that. And actually, the, one of like an earlier video I saw of Tate's, he kind of explains how when he was growing up, he was poor and he saw this rich guy driving a really, you know, nice car. And he was like, why am I poor? And that guy's rich. And his conclusion to that was, I need to get that rich. You know, I need to do what it, I need to do whatever I can to get that rich because it's bullshit that that's going on. And the difference between, I think the right wing mentality and the left wing mentality is it, we are like, it's wrong for that level of wealth disparity to happen to begin with. And what Andrew Tate is selling is it's wrong that that wealth disparity is happening to me, that I'm on the wrong end of it. That's the problem. And I think that's easier to understand in a way. Something that I preach all the time is all of the things that Andrew Tate and like these like men self-help people preach about individual responsibility are are true, like for the most part. Like I think a lot of things that like Jordan Peterson says about uh, general men's health is relatively good. That's the kernel of truth that he expands on a bunch of stuff. And we can do the same thing because we actually are telling the truth. We actually are telling the truth of, hey, if you respect women and you treat them well, uh, you'll get laid more in reality. Uh, like, like everyone who's an Andrew Tate fan, look around at your other eight Andrew Tate fans and see how many of them are getting laid on a regular basis. It's not going to be many because what Andrew Tate is preaching doesn't actually help with that. But at the same time, Connor, I think what you said of like, uh, treat them like peons um, is, uh, and I lost my video there. Sorry, guys. Um, is a little bit of a problem because that's how they feel. That, that That's the thing that they're resonating with with Andrew Tate is they feel like a peon and they want to feel like Andrew Tate, you know? And when they look at the left, there's a lot of people on the left. Even when I was just saying earlier that like when I was in middle school, I had like some jokes that I'd be ashamed of today. I was thinking like, I bet you there's some people in our audience who are like, I, I can't forgive anyone who ever found, you know, something like that funny, you know? And I think that that's what, general audiences see on the left a lot of the time as a reaction and i think that the 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 actual you know um welcoming left you know should not feel that way and needs to be louder than the other people on the left who are very shame centric um you know and and focused on that aspect of things um i don't know if you guys have had the same experience with the left but i do find that it is a real problem that people who <laughs> think a little more rationally about it need like ourselves need to push back on um not to say that the left created Andrew Tate but I think that's the thing that you know young teenage boys look at they're like this side thinks I'm an asshole and this side is telling me I'm awesome and it's pretty clear which side they want to be on yeah John I would agree with you I think uh I think when I said I, I treat Andrew Tate like a like a peon I think I just uh, I really meant that like the left just needs to be more confident when it comes to 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 these guys you know don't treat the followers of him as, as peons but but really just show that like, you know, I think you're right. We we do have that kernel of truth and we expand upon that, I believe in the correct way where we actually see what the real problems are. But then we can also show people, like you said, it's like, you don't need to act a certain way to like, what what do you want to try to get uh, sleep with 50 girls in the next week or something? Like, I can't really help you there, but I can help you, you know, have a good time, go out, you know, you know, go out on a date, go to, go to a movie, hang out with friends. Uh, those things, you know, I'm fighting for those things that I'm, I want to, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to support. Can I help? Can I help you get a Lamborghini? Probably not. But uh, I can help you uh, fight for a better life for you and your family, have some nice things, uh, you know, have have time to yourself, have 
uh, a good work ethic and, and a nice career, the things that, that we want. Uh, and th that's what I think, th think I mean, but thank you for point, pointing that out. That happens a lot on the left, but really it's just about us being confident enough to say, we know the, we, we ask the right questions. We know the kernel of truth. And what are you trying to get at? Are you trying to live a fulfilled life? We can help you do that. If you're trying to get the specific thing, I don't know if I can help you do that. But uh, just forming the narrative and, and being there for, for young people, I think is important. I, I think that something you just said there just like gave me the, this thought in my brain. It's just like, if Andrew Tate, like if the stuff that he preached to you really worked, like if your goal, like you're like a teenage boy sitting out there who like struggles with girls and stuff and you see Andrew Tate and you're taking advice from him because, you know, you, you want to do better with girls, you want to get laid, whatever. Um, in my experience, people who can get laid very easily don't have to coerce women into doing it. <laughs> like, like, like th there is a clear and obvious disconnect here. Like, even if you think that, you know, oh, the allegations are trumped up or whatever, like people who e get laid very easily don't have to do anything to coerce women to do anything. Women want to sleep with them. Um, they, they don't feel tricked afterwards. Um, and that is, I think, the the biggest thing that anyone can pull apart from the situation if you were a fan of Andrew Tate. Like, hey, maybe when you know you, you feel like you're being sold a crock of lies, maybe when you it's come become very clear that he's running a pyramid scheme and doing other coercive behaviors, maybe the other things that he was telling you to do also just lead to more coercive behaviors because apparently that's what he needed to do, you know? Um, and th that's the other aspect of all of this. I think as a policy, we should teach pyramid schemes in schools. So every single person in America can easily recognize triangle. And when they see Andrew Tate's business model go, that's a pyramid scheme because way too many people, grown ass adults fall for it. And I think that would easily eliminate a lot of this problem. You know, it's, um, it's a shame that, you know, sometimes I, I feel as though some of these things should be common knowledge, but it, it does get a little sad. I think sometimes I recognize that maybe this isn't common knowledge. I, I know that even talking to people in my own life who are late 20s, early 30s, um, s still to an extent don't really understand how to approach somebody uh, when it comes to trying to approach someone, you know, like, oh, oh, like I think this person's attractive. I want to talk to them. I, I want to get to know them, so on and so forth. Still don't quite figure out, haven't figured out like the very obvious idea of just, hey, respect somebody, get to know them, you know, maybe talk to them like a like a person <laughs> versus uh, an object that you're trying to sleep with. You know, it, it's just the basic respect thing. You know, I, again, I, I assume this would be pretty obvious, but, may, but maybe it's not, you know, and I think due to that fact, people like Andrew Tate are able to manipulate you into thinking that. You know, like you have to be this, you have to look a certain way, have a certain amount of money, do a certain amount of, uh, none of those things are ever true. You know, just get to know a human being on an emotional level, get to like, get to know them, you know, like, and you have a, have a great chance of making some kind of a connection. And for those who are interested in kind of knowing a little bit more about Andrew Tate's case, like the legal side of the case, like why, like what he's being charged for, uh, you know, what exactly is going to be the outcome of all of this? Are these charges going to stick? Uh, we will have some some articles in the episode description, kind of detailing more about the case, particularly. And we do have a video right here at the end to talk about more about the charges that are brought against Tate and probably why they're going to end up sticking in court. These are his words, not my words. And I'm not going to take it out of context. You're effectively taking girls, teaching them how to make unlimited money from home, and then making sure they give it all to you. So you're making sure that you're teaching girls how to make a shit ton of money. Right off the bat, he tells you his main goal is to have them work for him and him get all the money. Then I realized I had about five girlfriends, all smoking hall, and females are an asset. Why don't you work for me so we spend more time together? What if you doing what? So I'll have a webcam business. Oh, I don't want to do that. So, okay, I know you don't want to do that, but listen, come and let's have a meeting. Let's just talk about it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Fine. But let me explain it to you properly. In fact, I'll bring one of the girls who works for me. You, your bottom bitch, the new girl, you go out for fucking a nice dinner. Your bottom bitch is the one who does the selling. You don't do the selling. The girl has to hear from a girl. And this is where your bottom bitch has to be trained. That's why I said it's so important to have a good first girl. Remember Glenn Maxwell? That was the girl that recruited for Jeffrey Epstein. 
almost identical to what he's talking about here. I had a separate phone with all my girls, guys in that phone, and I kept control of it. Don't let your girl have this, because if your girl ever runs off and leaves you, you don't want her to have an address book of all the guys she can get money from. Another aspect of control. You don't want her to have your client list because if she has your client list, she can leave you. So you've got to restrict her information. It's a systematic method of control to control these women. You want her to leave and go, well, I don't know the account. I don't have the password to the account. I've never set it up before. I don't know how the banking works. I don't have any of my guys' phone numbers. I have nothing. And that's why they don't want to leave because they're like, oh, well, he has everything. I need him. I have to stay with him. He has everything. It's important. I'm telling you, it's a very important element, that control. It's a very important element that control. And they will leave if you don't have every aspect under control. Tax is also another important element for controlling your woman. You're not gonna pay anybody tax because you're getting paid in Bitcoin. You need to tell your girl that you're paying the tax because girls are lazy and girls are stupid and girls don't understand how taxes work. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, we've made this much money, but I'm gonna pay the tax to make sure we don't get in trouble. Now that allows you to do two things. One is another control element. See how that control all it is is a recurring theme over and over and over again. If I do it alone, I have to deal with taxes. Taxes are complicated. The control element. And he doesn't have respect for these women at all because he thinks they're stupid. It allows you to pay her a smaller percent. So I used to pay my girls 30%. So for every $10,000 they made, I'd give them three and I'd keep seven. They thought they were on 50%. And I said that the disparity is because of taxes. If they say, why is it 50-50? I'm the one who knows what he's doing. I'm the one with the knowledge. I'm the da 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 Shut the fuck up. Go online. Print out some tax forms. I used to do this all the time. I used to print out some random tax forms and say, yeah, sign here and sign this. What is it? It's for the tax. You want to pay the tax or not? Throw them away afterwards. But they, they think something's happening. Something real's happening. Nothing's happening besides me getting rich, bitch. Nothing's happening except for me getting rich, bitch. That's what he just said. So he's taking another 20% of what would have been their earnings saying he's paying taxes, but he's not paying taxes. His words, that's fraud, force, fraud, or coercion.